The business motherfucker. The Daily Read. Your source for news, politics, sports, and all things trending. Here's your host, Marcus Gentry. Welcome to the Daily Read, and I am your host, Marcus Gentry. Uh, today's show is going to be a good show, people. Today's show is on the origins of Christmas, the true origins of Christmas. And if many of you do your own research, no matter what color creed you are, you will find out the true uh, history of Christmas. Not only Christmas, but we're going to dive into uh, watch parties. You know, everybody want to go to their church uh, for watch parties. And for whites, it's different in meaning than, than for us African Americans. And there was a slight uh, blending of the two over the last hundred years. And we're going to dive into that because uh, all of this ties back into Christianity and christmas okay uh christmas is one of those holidays that is a conglomeration of a lot of different uh ethnicities sumerian uh, uh judaism a lot of middle eastern and mediterranean cultures have contributed to christian to to christmas and it has in, it developed into what we have today when we're dealing with Christmas trees, when we're dealing with wreaths that you hang on your front door. All of these symbols have meanings that came from different cultures. This stuff was not practiced by uh, Jesus, his followers, and his people. A lot of this stuff is add-ons from pagan cultures that adopted uh, some of the teachings of uh, uh, Jesus, even Christianity itself. Like I said, we're not going to dive into Christianity. I'm going to say that for another show, and I'm going to definitely have callers in for that, but this is this is something that that is separate. And the reason why it's separate is because there was a ruling in the Supreme Court. We're going to dive into that first so I can explain to you uh, more about what I'm saying. In the 1990s, the Salon, Ohio, a Cleveland sub suburb school board banned all nativity and other Christmas scenes on any school property because they felt it violated the separation of church and state. They were challenged in court when outraged parents opposed them, feeling that Christmas was being stolen from their children and the community. The board lost the case. Now, some of you might applaud that because you are true believers and true lovers of history and Christianity, but some of you don't know the history. The reason why they lost the case is because the citizenry had contended that Christmas was a worldwide tradition that was not part of and transcended religion. It was deemed to be secular and part of the virtually all cultures worldwide. Basically, what the Supreme Court agreed on was that no matter if people try to tie Christmas into Jesus, his birth, and things surrounding things that happened with him, it has no bearing on religion. Christmas is a conglomeration of different cultures and religions mixed in together. Documentations, stacks and stacks and stacks of documentations that was su submitted to the Supreme Court and was looked over by both liberal and conservative judges. And I'm going to say this again, looked over by liberal 
and conservative judges deemed that Christmas, regardless of what the name is, and a lot of people try to say Christmas is the celebration of Christ, Christmas has no religious bearing whatsoever. It's a made up holiday. So therefore, the teachers have no right to stop it from being put in the schools. Why? Because in our government, we have a separation of church and state. We have a separation of the government and the church. What the school was trying to say was that inviting Christmas into the schools was inviting religion in the schools. And what the Supreme Court said was no, because Christmas has no bearing on religion. We got to we got to get this understood, people. Oh, uh, we we, we got to get this understood. It, it, Christmas Christmas has no bearing on religion. Okay, this is some man-made stuff that makes people that makes people feel good, and it's been continued on through the generation through our kids because our kids want it because our kids want to have gifts and we want to make our kids happy this is not something that's necessary celebrating christmas is not going to bring you closer to god matter of fact i'm going to go into further detail about christmas that's going to shock some of you when you find out how many pagan uh, ties and heathen ties that Christmas has involved in it. Now, we finna examine it. We finna examine it. First, we'll get back to this court case. The court decision affirmed that Christmas has no Christian roots at all. However, the court's opinion also noted that Bible reading and prayer obviously are associated with Christianity. So you cannot read a Bible in school. You cannot preach in school. You can't pray in school because there's a separation. But you can have Christmas at, at, at celebrations like trees throwing up, uh, kids uh, giving gifts and things of that nature because it has no bearing on religion it's a conglomeration of a lot of different pieces that have been thrown in and 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 to go back on that we got to look at rome rome was like america rome was the powerhouse in the world of yesterday rome was the greatest country and the greatest conquerors ever seen you know these people literally enslaved European countries and African countries, North and South and East and West. They would have enslaved Chinese countries and Asian countries, but the Asian people were vastly outnumbered Rome. They, Rome was fighting already too many, too many uh, battles in different countries to even think about Asia. But Rome was the biggest powerhouse of yesterday. And when Rome took over all of these countries, they had to accommodate the different cultures that was under their rule, under their slave, in enslavement. You know, you had the African cultures, the Egyptians, the, the, the Jews in the north of Africa. You had the pagans up in uh, the Caucasus Mountains of Europe that they conquered. You had all of these different Germanic people and, and, and African people mixed in with Roman culture that eventually a lot of bits and pieces were celebrated inside that culture. You might walk down one street and, 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 and see uh, some Germans celebrating the German holiday in Rome. And you might go down another street and see some Jews, uh, you know, celebrating their, one of their culture, uh, cultural religious days. That's how Rome was. 
And we got to understand the history to know and understand that the, 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 it's, Christmas is a conglomeration of a lot of things tied in. And most of them are pagan, heathen religions and cultures. Now, nearly all aspects of Christmas observance have their roots in Roman custom and religion. And remember, we just got through talking about Rome was a conglomeration of a lot of different countries that they had uh, taken over. Now, the earliest reference to Christmas being marked on December 25th comes from the second century after Jesus' birth. That's nearly uh, 280 to 300 years after Jesus died before the first celebration of Christmas even came about. That lets you know that's man-made. Jesus was not a Christian. He, he studied Judaism. And let's break that down, people. He didn't celebrate his own birthday. I'm going to let that sit on your soul for a minute. He didn't want people to worship him. He wanted you to worship God. Let that sit on your soul for a minute. The, 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 the worshiping of Christmas by some people who try to relate it to Jesus, he didn't want nothing like that. He didn't want you to worship him. He wants you to worship God. This is gonna this is gonna hit some of you in the gut. You know, when you when you run out here every every year around December getting these Christmas trees, and when I get into what the Christmas tree mean and the wreath, you're really gonna be like, wow. And this is stuff you can research on your own. Because the tree that everybody decorates for Christmas supersedes Christianity. It goes back to the Egyptian days. And we're going to discuss that later on. It is considered likely the first Christmas celebrations were in reaction to the Roman Saturnalia, a harvest festival that marked the winter solstice. You see, Rome had their own festivals, their own uh, uh, cultures, but they had took over so many different countries and had so many people in Rome representing these other countries that they had to accommodate a lot of these people. Because they didn't want infighting within the Roman uh, uh, city-state itself. They didn't care about you fighting in, 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 in Jerusalem. They didn't care about you fighting in, in, in Europe. They didn't want Rome being burnt to the ground. And it was too many people in Roman society that believed in too many different things. But the main power structure in Rome was slowly fading away. And we can relate to that today in what's going on with, with our politics. And I'm going to tell you why. There's a fear in the Caucasian and white American community that something is being taken from them. All of this relates to my whole program and the things that I've been saying to you, my listeners, my loyal listeners, over the last few months. This whole Donald Trump character and the things surrounding him and, and the stuff that's going on with him has a root in fear, a fear of someone taking something from them. And the same thing happened in Roman politics to the point where they had so many countries that they had taken over. They had so many uh, 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 religious festivals on different sides of different parts of their city that the main people who started Rome, the emperors and, and, and the Senate, the senators, they felt like they were being pushed out of their own country that they founded. By 529 AD, after Christianity had become the official state religion of the Roman Empire, Emperor Justinian 
make Christian Christmas a civic holiday. This is nearly 300 years after Jesus died. Now this wasn't the Jews that did this. This was the Romans. This was the Romans. Moving on. Encyclopedia of Americana, 1956. Christmas was not observed in the first centuries of the Christian church since the Christian uses in general was to celebrate the death of a remarkable person, not the birth, the death of a remarkable person rather than their birth. At a feast was established in memory of this event in the fourth century. In the fifth century, the Western church ordered the feast to be celebrated forever on the day of the Mithraic rites of the birth of the sun at the close of Saturnalia, as no certain knowledge of the day of Christian uh, uh, Jesus' birth existed. They had no, no official date of when Jesus was even born, so they just gave him one. It, 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 it appeased everybody. It pleased the Jews that the Romans had took over and, and conquered. Because the Jews were, were fast becoming a powerhouse in Rome. They they fat they were book put it this way. To to break things down for some of my listeners, the Americans or the Europeans took slaves out of Africa. Now that we're here in America, we are slowly having more say in America. We still are not the majority, we're still minorities, but slowly over time, the more we have kids, the more we mix races and have kids by white people, we are slowly becoming a powerhouse in this country. Same thing in Rome. Rome, slowly after taking over all of these powerful countries and conquering them, they had to appease the people in these countries to keep war from breaking out all over again the way to appease these people was through their religion but they didn't want to give up their religions it was a conglomeration of a, a mixture of roman pagan uh fertility which was december 25th and judaism beliefs they wanted to celebrate the birth of one of their greatest leaders, which was Jesus. They didn't know his birth. And the Jews usually don't celebrate your birthday no way. They celebrate your death day. Especially if you're an accomplished person in the Jewish community. So there was concessions on both sides. This is real history. This, is, this has been researched. I, I, I got the paperwork right here. You know, this is not this is not no tradition. Big Mama and them gave to you, and, you, and this is not something I'm just kicking from uh, out the air. You can look this up yourself. It was 300 years after Christ before the Roman Church kept Christmas, and not until the fifth century that it was mandated to be kept throughout the empire as an official festival to honor Christ. That's because the Jews were fast becoming a powerful force inside the Roman Empire. Even though Jews were conquered by Romans over the years, over the two, three hundred years, that's all it takes. That's all it takes is two, three hundred years for one race of people to start blending in with the other race of people. And that's all it took was two, three hundred years before the Jews started to become less of slaves and more of management they they was more into the management of rome and and part of the concessions that they needed to keep from uh causing problems and causing wars and rebelling was you give us something you know and this this is what it came out of this is what came out of it.
as far as the actual birth date of Christ uh, Jesus, no no one knows what his actual birth date was. But if you look at the, the official reading of the biblical books, and if you look at the history of the nomadic regions of the Jewish people and the shepherds, it says Christ was born around the fall, not the winter. December 25th is the winter. And the reason that is, is because it was custom among the Jews to send out their sheep to the deserts about the Passover, that's early spring, and bring them home at the commencement of the first rain, which is starting in fall. The first rains began in early to mid fall. Continuing with this quote, it says, during the time they were out, the shepherds watched them day and night. This is a quote out the Bible. During the time of Jesus' birth, the first rains, it says, during the time they were out, the shepherds watched them day and night. And as the first rains began early in the month of March, or Esven, they call it Esven in, in, in the Jewish language, which answers to part of our October and November. Luke 2, sec, two uh, second 8 explains that when Christ was born, there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Abiding in the fields. That means watching over their flock. That's fall. This is fall now. Going, going not, not winter time. In the Roman world, the Saturnalia, December 17th, is the start of uh, winter. It lasts through December 17th through the 25th. was a time of merrymaking and exchanging of gifts. December 25th was also regarded as the birthday of the Iranian mystery god Mithra, the son of righteousness. On the Roman New Year, January 1st, houses were decorated with greenery lights, and the gifts were given to the children and the poor. To these observances were added the Germanic Celtic Yule Rites when the Teutonic tribes penetrated into Gaul, Britain, and Central Europe. As I said, Rome is the founder of Christmas. Christmas is a conglomeration of the different countries that Rome conquered. They wanted to appease these people and make Rome one solid country, one, stop, one solid union. And the best way to appease all of these people that they conquered was give them a little something from their own culture to be proud of. This is man-made. You got to know this history, you know. Because a lot of people get mad when they see somebody who don't celebrate Christmas. It's not because they're being uh, a Scrooge or nothing like that. They might know real history and, and feel like they don't necessarily need to celebrate that in the first place. It's not going to bring you no closer to God. I'm going to get into this first commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the Christmas tree and how it outdates Christmas and the wreath that everybody puts on their on their door. These are things that was added from ger German countries that was conquered by Rome. These are things that was going on in German, Germanic and, and European countries before uh, Christmas was even thought of. We'll be back with the Daily Read. The business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. Hi, I'm Marcus Gentry of the Daily Read. Hi, and I'm Shante Gentry of J Head Cutie and MG Modeling. And we wish you a happy holidays, a happy new year, and a very Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. <laughs> the business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. <laughs> All right, good people, we're back with the Daily Read, and I'm your host, Marcus Gentry. I'm going to do a quick recap on uh, 
the first segment of the show, we was talking about uh, the history of Christianity um, or, or Christmas, not Christianity. We're going to do that on a separate show. But how Christmas is a conglomeration of a lot of different cultures that was conquered by Rome. Rome had a lot of policies. And uh, they, Rome, Rome Senate was almost the same as what we have today in America, where we have the president, uh, the Senate, and then you have the judiciary. The difference is the emperor had more power than our president does. That's one thing that the constitutional writers changed when it comes down to our system of government. The system of government is almost the same, but the emperor had the final say. That's not the case in America. In, in America, uh, the, 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 the Senate or the Congress can watch over what the president does. And the judiciary, all three branches are basically uh, co-equal branches. They have co-equal power. And in Rome, it was different. The Senate basically was advisors. And the Senate was made up of a lot of different uh, senators who were from different countries that was conquered by Rome. And the emperor was Roman and he had the final say. You know, he took the advice, but he didn't necessarily have to take the advice of the Senate. So, so there, there is a difference. Now, as far as uh, uh, Christmas goes, Christmas is a, a conglomeration of a lot of different pagan and heathen uh, practices that was adopted by the Roman Empire to keep the population happy, to give them something to celebrate. And, and it, the tradition has kept going on to the day. And just to get just just to give you a brief uh, 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 mind state of how people take Christmas. Some years ago, a priest in New Jersey told his Sunday school class that Santa was a myth. The outrage from parents and his supervisors was swift. He had killed Santa. He had destroyed the family tradition. He had usurped the family authority. The article continued. He was officially censored by his superiors for being overzealous and insensitive. Basically, all he did was tell people the truth. This man was a, a clergy. He was a religious man. But even he knew that the whole guise of Christmas was fake. And he basically let it be known. You know, he's not finna uh, lie to these kids. But people are so, so, uh, so stuck on their traditions that they don't understand that your traditions might go against what you claim you believe in. And the prime example of that is what's going on today with Donald Trump. I, I promise I wasn't going to bring politics in today because I want to do today about Christmas and, and uh, Night Watch. But it's the similarities are the same. You got a man who sleeps around with porn stars. He's a crook. He lies every time he opens his mouth. He goes against everything that people of the faith believe. But some of his staunch supporters and major backers are Christian. They claim they Christian. And it's the same way with this whole Christmas scheme. You got Christmas, which has nothing to do with Jesus at all. They can claim that it's it's an honor of his birthday all they want to, but it has nothing to do with him at all. And yet you got people so so draped in their their traditions that they're going against their own religion and they try to make excuses to fit it in to their religious beliefs. But let's move on to, Chris, to, to, the, to the Christmas tree. This is going to shock some of you. You know, 
this is this is this is going to shock some of you the interchange of presents between friends is like the characteristics of christmas and saturnalia and must have been adopted by christians from the pagans as the uh, adm admonition of tertullian plainly shows and this all goes back to uh the presence up under the christmas tree like every other aspect of christmas the shocking truth is that even this supposed christian custom does not come from the bible it is an irony that people love to believe they are following the custom of the wise men giving to christ when actually they are giving almost exclusively to each other and nothing to christ that's like having a, a, a birthday celebration for somebody and give everybody else a gift except the person the celebration is for. The Bible actually teaches that Christians should not keep birthdays. Numerous scriptures make this principle clear. However, what if you went to a birthday party that had been prepared for you and everybody gave gifts to each other and you were left out? And this leads into the Christmas tree, the origins of the Christmas tree. Because, you know, of course, we have the presents up under the Christmas tree. Most aspects of Christmas are not referred to in the Bible. Of course, the reason is that they are not from God. They are not the part of the way he wants people to worship him. Christmas tree, however, is directly mentioned in the Bible. That means the Christmas tree or the tree that has all of the lights and the glitter and the gold draped on it is in Jeremiah 10, 2 through 5. It says, Thus says the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, for the customs of the people are vain. For one cuts a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Now also it is in them to do no good. This is in the Bible, people. They were doing... Uh, Christmas trees or trees draped in glitter and gold the heathens were you know these are the people who who were not uh they they worshiped this stuff the whole glitter and gold and and the bobs and and the, and, the, and the lights on the trees you know putting candles on the trees and things of that nature to to, to light it up this was this was pagan stuff and they talk about it in the Bible a lot of you have traditions that don't even read your Bible this plain description of the modern Christmas tree is clear God directly refers to it as the heathen way just as directly he commands his people to learn not the way of the heathen and of course everybody know who heathens are Now we're gonna get on to the holly, the things that people hang on their doors. You see, and, and, and I'm doing all of this in segments because that lets you know that Christmas is a conglomeration of a lot of different pagan and heathen cultures tied in to, to a man-made uh, uh, holiday. The earliest Christmas tree came out of Egypt. They would go out and pick the prettiest tree, cut it down, and drape it with gold and silver and some forms of uh, uh, berries. This was a tradition. Now the wreath came from Germany, from the Germanic people. So now just think about that. How in the world 
you got a, 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 a tradition called Christmas where you have a birthday for someone who's not, it's not even his birthday. Then you have a tree that you drape with glitter and all kinds of lights that originated out of Egypt. And then you have reefs that people put on their doors, which originated out of Germany. Fred Frederick Haskins further states the use of Christmas reefs is believed by authorities to be traceable to the pagan customs of decorating buildings and places of worship at the east at the feast, which took place at the same time as Christmas. These were the poor people of German descent who didn't have the money to go out and cut a tree. So they started adopting wreaths and placing on the doors. Encyclopedia Britannica under Celestrals exposes the origin of the holy wreath, holly wreath. European pagans brought holly sprays into their homes, offering them to the fairy people of the forest as refuge from the harsh winter weather. During the Saturnalia, the Roman winter festival, branches of holly were exchanged as tokens of friendship. The earliest Roman Christians apparently used holly as decoration at the Christmas seasons. Let that, let that sink in for a minute. Like I say, all of this is researchable. I'm not bringing you nothing you can't research yourself. This is real history. There are diff different types of holly. Virtually all of them come in male and female varieties. Blue Prince and Blue Princess or Blue Boy and Blue Girl. China Boy and China Girl. Female holly plants cannot have berries unless a nearby male plant pollinates them. We're going we're gonna to take it a little step further. I have I have a little time in this segment. We're gonna go to the mistletoe. Christmas is incomplete to many unless it involves kissing under the mistletoe. This pagan custom was natural on a night that involved much revelry done in the spirit of drunken orgies. Just like today, this kissing usually occurred at the beginning of any modern Saturnalia Christmas celebration. All of this stuff ties back into the uh this. December 25th uh, celebration of pagan holidays. I'm going to get into my last commercial break and I'll be back. The business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. Hi, I'm Marcus Gentry of the Daily Read. Hi, and I'm Shante Gentry of J Head Cutie and MG Modeling. And we wish you a happy holidays, a happy new year, and a very Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. <laughs> the business, motherfucker. The Daily Read. <laughs> All right, we're back with the Daily Read. On this last segment, uh, we've already talked about how uh, Christmas is a conglomeration on uh, a lot of different cultures that was conquered by Rome. And everything was tied in to accommodate for the different uh, belief systems that came up under Roman rule. We talked about the Christmas tree. <laughs> Excuse me. We talked about the Christmas tree and and how it outdates Christmas itself. It goes back to Egyptian uh, uh, rule when they had their certain holidays where, you know, it was special to go out and cut down a tree and add uh, streams of gold and, 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 and jewels to the tree in, in honoration of some pagan uh, traditions. We talked about the wreath and how a lot of poor Germanic people who couldn't afford uh, Christmas trees would get the wreath. We talked about the mistletoe and the whole kissing 
which goes back to uh, Roman pagan holidays where they have fertility days and wild orgies. It's, it's, it's been well documented in Rome. Now, on this last segment, we're going to get into uh, the origin of watch night. My aunt recently asked me to do a segment on this because this ties in with all of this is what's going on with religion and Christianity. And the reason why it ties in because, as I said on Facebook to introduce today's show, a lot of people tie in so many different uh, re traditions and they try to tie it in to the religion itself. Your belief in God is your belief in God. But a lot of these traditions and celebrations are not necessary. A lot of these traditions and celebrations, not only are they not necessary, but they also go against what you claim you believe in. If you stop and think about it and do your own research, you will see that this is one example of it. Okay. Watch night church service began in 1862 but that's a that's a different watch service okay watch service has been going on before 1862 okay i'm gonna get i'm gonna go deeper into that and and i'm uh, sandra jones my aunt I'm, i want you to pay attention to this cause i know you're gonna watch today's show because you asked me to do this show on uh night watch services and I told you I was going to do my research on it. Now, Watch Night Service began for black Americans in 1862 with blacks in the U.S. awaiting the enactment of the Emancipation Proclamation on New Year's Day, 1863. Okay. Night Watch Services have been going on way before this. Okay. The Christians in Europe would hold night watch services in order to uh, protect their beliefs. Basically, they're watching. Uh, they they put. I'm gonna break it down for you so so people can understand what I mean. Every month around the full moon. Christ, uh, Christians would get together at church at night and pray almost all night. They call it night watch service. And this has been going on for a long time. In America, well, let me let me let me let me let me just give you the brief history of it. Many of you who live or grew up in the black communities in the United States have probably heard of watch night service. The gathering of the faithful in church on New Year's Eve, the service usually begins anywhere from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. and ends at midnight with the en entrance of the new year. Some folks come to church first before they're going out to celebrate. For others, church is the only thing that they do. Now, for us as minorities, we held a night watch service. In, in 1862 because we was waiting on Abraham President Abraham Lincoln to sign the proclamation that would free the slaves but the night the night services the night watch services has been going on for hundreds of years or decades before that even occurred over the last 60 to 100 years People have slowly tried to correlate what happened in 1862 with a normal night watch occurrences. That's not the case. So you have minorities today, they call them Freedom Watch Service. Okay? Freedom Watch Service, you didn't have to do in the church. People, tr people try to tie it in to the church. But you can do it in your home. You know, you can, you can do it amongst friends. It's basically a celebration saying that 
1863 on the 1st of January, the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. You don't necessarily have to do it in the church. Okay. A lot of people go to the church because a lot of uh, uh, slaves went to churches to wait for the uh, Emancipation Proclamation to be signed, but they didn't necessarily have to be in the church. They were going to people, friends' houses, you know, waiting. So it wasn't necessarily tied into the church back then. But as today, you have a lot of people try to tie it in to the church. And they're and they're getting two they're getting two different things uh mingled in together that has really no relation to each other. Okay, now now watch night. This is watch night, not freedom watch night. This is watch night. Can properly refer either generally to New Year's Eve or specifically to a religious service held on New Year's Eve. Okay, now that re that that's Freedom Watch that relates to us minorities. Now Night Watch, where people go to night services around the full moon of every month, that was to reaffirm their belief in God. That's something that 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 Christians have been doing for at least a hundred years before the Emancipation Proclamation even got signed. Okay, John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, picked it up from the Moravians. These are these are other Christian people incorporating a watch night vigil into the practices of his denomination beginning in 1740. Okay, 1740. Now, this is almost 100 years before the Emancipation Proclamation even started. So beginning in 1740. The Methodist watch nights were held once a month on full moons. The first such service in the United States reportedly taking place in 1770 at Old St. George Church in Philadelphia. These services survive to the present day in the denomination's worship manuals as covenant renewal services. Okay. Now, the end of year watch night of 1862 took on a special significance attaching to the impending January 1st, 1863 enactment of the Emancipation Proclamation. And the night has become to be known as Freedom's Eve Watch. There is a difference. Okay. One difference is Freedom Eve's Watch was the awaiting of blacks in America for Lincoln to sign the Emancipation Proclamation. The other watch is for people to go in at night and pray all night to affirm their belief in God. There's a difference. On September 22, 1862, President Lincoln issued a preliminary Emancipation Proclamation which stated on the first day of January, all person held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States if they continue to hold these people captive. Thenceforth and forever they will be free. Lincoln subsequently issued the Emancipation Proclamation itself on the first of January, 1863. That's the reason why uh, a lot of deeply, especially in the South, a lot of black Americans, deeply religious black Americans, they know a little bit about the history of the church that they worship in. And they know they have night services, but they try to tie in uh, the Emancipation Freedom Watch service with night watch service it has no bearing on each other there's there's a difference so so i just want to make that clear you know and and you don't necessarily have to celebrate that in your church you can if you want to uh, go to your church and celebrate freedom watch night instead of new year's night new year's eve night that's fine but know your history on it 
so you won't go out there telling people false information about, you know, Night Watch started because we blacks was in the church waiting on the Emancipation Proclamation and now the whites do it. This stuff has been going on, Night Watch service has been going on long before the Emancipation Proclamation. Okay? Night Freedom Watch has a certain significance to us as black people though. So, so, you know, I'm going to end today's program. I hope you guys learned something valuable from this show. And I'm always trying to keep it uh, real with you and, and give you some valuable information to help out my community and uh, uh, get your mind moving. So do your own research. Don't just take my word for it. Uh, 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 pick up a book. Pick up a computer. You know, do your research and, and find out some of the things that I've been talking about on my show. All right, good people. This is the Daily Read. Thank you. The business, motherfucker. The Daily Read.